Hi, everybody, and welcome to another update from Quantum Plant Healing. My name's David Farrell. I'm a quantum plant alchemist and plant healer and co-founder of Quantum Plant Healing. Uh, now, regular uh, viewers here on uh, my YouTube channel will know about some of the work and various podcasts that I do in conjunction with other people, other teachers, like uh, the Web of Weird podcast with uh, my friend and brother and herbalist Pete Jackson Main, uh, also Moons and Mythos with astrologer and mythologist Kelly Hunter, and also now a new series called Beyond the Flow uh, with wonderful colleague that I met during one of the immersions that's been going on in quantum plant healing, Shirley Chantel, Numerian Dreamweaver, who's been channeling wonderful artwork from the plants that we've been doing in the immersions. So uh, this little video we're putting out now is more of a sort of energetic update, I guess you could say. Also a little bit of information about stuff that's coming up on quantum plant healing, uh, what's also been uh, going on already. Uh, and just to give a little bit of an overview of uh, where we're at right now. And also just to share a little bit about the upcoming global immersion that we're going to be doing with the tree of eternity yidrasil the yew tree uh it's actually the oldest living being on the planet more than 260 million years in linear time the yew tree has been here overseeing uh the development of not only humans but i guess probably many other beings too uh dinosaurs and who knows probably many other civilizations as yet unremembered um by humanity at this moment in time but uh, in order to uh, bring that uh, perhaps into more of a place of coherence and clarity, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the sequence again. And I've talked about this since by my good friend Janet Trelauer. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, they are on the YouTube channel. You can see them in different playlists here. Highly recommend uh, watching the videos with Zach for sure. Um, but also the sequence of plants that was given to us at Quantum Plant Healing earlier this year, which really started with dandelion. And dandelion is many things. Um, but an incredibly powerful being, as it turns out, we now understand from the Sirius star system, uh, very much connected to the feline cat energy of the Sirius beings. Uh, but also really what Dandelion showed us that despite being an incredible uh, uh, <laughs> liver cleanser, uh, really and truly the Dandelion's main focus is to bring us into the present moment, to keep us centered and rooted but also to be deeply connected into our heart because our heart is where we connect with the plant beings. Uh, we cannot connect from uh, our mind or our brain to plant intelligence. We have to connect through the heart. That's why the, you know, the heart chakra is green, why nature is green. Um, but in connecting to our heart, we have the conduit or the possibility for the channel to open up to our higher selves, our non-dual fifth dimensional unconditional love. Uh, part of ourselves. Uh, I mean, as human beings, we are all multidimensional and exist on all planes all at once. Uh, but down here in the soup of 3D, it can be a little difficult sometimes to really connect to those other aspects of ourselves. And more often than not, um, we don't even necessarily have an idea really what is going on on emotional planes, the astral realms or our 4D bodies. And so it is very difficult for people often to consider or even perceive other realms of consciousness that are maybe more fine or as you would say higher and it's not really how i see it um but yeah so dandelion gives us this ability to to get centered and get into our hearts in the sequence of plants that came to us the second one that we did was the artemisias that was a huge uh, immersion globally uh, many people took part uh we even had a live earthquake during one of the live calls uh maybe some of you will remember that who were on that call uh very very powerful uh work with the artemisias who are also uh, powerful medicines working many different ways, but really their job as explained to us was that they wanted to come in and clean our terrain, uh, our emotional um, energetic fields. Uh, but uh, we're trying to now use new language as we step into uh, different understandings from a more quantum space. And this idea of the, the terrain, the personal terrain, I think is, is, is a good one. And I'm using it more often, it resonates. Uh, still, it's still the energy field, it's still our aura, it's still all of those things, but maybe this is a time for new language. So also, Whilst the uh, Artemisias can be very direct and very challenging, uh, they do like to shine the torchlight into those dark corners of our terrains and bring to the surface those things that no longer serve us. Can be a little uncomfortable, but is uh, hugely important 
uh, as we make this transition to a higher state of consciousness, but embodied in a 3D body. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute too. Um, but also the other uh, really important uh, piece that the Artemisius gave us was this idea of a central alignment. Uh, the, the Artemisius, particularly uh, Mugwort Artemisia vulgaris, are very, very good at creating alignment in the body. Even physically, I've seen people's uh, backs get put back in uh, after many years of back problems just from uh, a day or so working with, with Mugwort tea and tincture and the energy of Mugwort. Um, so that was the first piece, very personal plants, dandelion. Uh, mugwort, these are plants you can often find growing, you know, beside the road or in the cracks or uh, and, and, you know, uh, they're also plants. The next two that came in the sequence uh, originally were then the elder tree or the elder mother and the yew tree. Uh, so we've gone from plants to trees, but also with elder, what she really asked of us was in the very grandmotherly way that she is, was to keep looking to see what is still hidden from us. Uh, quite often, as it turned out, stuff maybe from past lives or other timelines that was still somehow having an echo into this time frame. Uh, might sound a little far out, but having worked with Dandelion, who's a Time Lord, he really actually opens up uh, the possibility for us to start understanding that we have multiple aspects of ourselves all operating in multiple timelines that seem like past lives in linear time but actually all going on concurrently past present and future as dandelion loves to show us through synchronicities and remind us all the time there is only one moment that is now uh, so we can have perceptions of other aspects of ourselves maybe involved in other activities maybe needing healing in other timelines uh, but somehow they're still manifesting for us in this one who are you truly who are you truly uh, and you know, when these other plants have started to strip away the excess baggage and stuff that we have, who are we without any sense of identity, uh, any sense of status? What are we left with? What is the gem that is really us that wants to emerge? And so Elder really uh, helped us to bring to a place of more clarity, more illumination. Uh, and that was right before the big powerful eclipse that just happened a little while back. And uh, whilst uh, we were doing that elder immersion, first of all, uh, many things started to come through, including the connection with Shirley, with the artwork. And what really came out of elder also, which is why this was so interesting and so beautiful, the way that it unfolded with that and Shirley and the artwork, was this idea of how to express ourselves. It became very clear that many people were getting blocked in their throat chakra. <clears throat> Even now, you can tell, still tell that I'm a little bit clearing some of that energy out myself. Um, lots of collective mucus and gunk in the sinuses, in the throat. Uh, and as I talked about uh, in many talks before, the rear throat chakra, the psychic chakra, is where we really have our connection to spirit and energies. And so if that's blocked, we're actually somewhat disconnected from spirit. And thus, when the impulses come in, energetically speaking, maybe then when we go to express them with the word or a spell, uh, you know, spelling, uh, all of these interesting uh aspects of this uh talking our truth is that actually if we're disconnected or blocked in here what comes out can often be distorted and maybe things come out of our words that are not exactly how it sounded in our head um, but also this idea of how do we express ourselves uh how do we stand up for ourselves how do we call out uh those things that seem inappropriate to us or you know unequal and so this can come through the you know, very personal processes uh standing your ground against other people around you maybe who have different truths to you who are in trying to impress on you that their truth is, is the truth um uh, how do you maintain your sovereignty in those spaces quite often i guess probably with family members or friends uh who maybe we've known a long time or feel deeply connected to but somehow are odds with uh we don't necessarily want to have a fight with everybody or have big disagreements but at the same time we don't want to be absorbing other people's truths uh and somehow feeling put upon we need to be able to stand our ground so what came out of that actually was the need to do some throat chakra work and so then there was a mini immersion that emerged with yarrow uh very very powerful very challenging uh lots of uh, interesting interference came to prevent that immersion from even taking place again trying to stop us from speaking our truth so this is a piece that has been going on uh for a while and uh, we can see that in many different ways uh without necessarily needing to spell that out so um we're now moving into this final piece around the yew tree uh which starts with the new uh mayan uh, wave spell of the mag um, <laughs> magnetic red moon on december the 13th as with 
Uh, all of these wave spells, this one will run for 13 days and will include the very powerful uh solstice that's coming up uh in the northern hemisphere the winter solstice in the southern hemisphere the summer solstice of course and uh, actually i will be doing another one of my astrological previews with the wonderful astrologer pam gregory which will be coming out a few days before uh the immersion starts on the 11th of december you'll be able to catch that here on my youtube channel and of course on hers too and on the wisdom hub and on quantum plant healing you'll be able to see the video and all of those and we're going to be doing a, a deep dive into the energies of winter solstice or summer solstice coming up on the 21st or 22nd of december uh so this is uh, i believe one of the most powerful moments that we have in this uh ascension process if we want to call it that or this elevation of frequencies on the planet and with jupiter now almost about to enter into the last uh, degree of uh, Pisces it seems that there is um, if we think of the energy of Pisces of course being watery emotional the collective and Jupiter the expansion of that as Jupiter has gone forwards how I've been experiencing that energy is a big kind of expansion outwards very very intense uh, quite difficult to even stay grounded a little bit at the moment so working with with the grounding plants like oak and tobacco uh, just to stay in the body, working with dandelions, still all of these plants, you know, even after these emotions are finished, they're still very useful uh, to work with. And that's partly why these particular plants came through. Um, but also understanding that now as we move into this final piece, this final uh, sequence, uh, this final uh, immersion in the sequence that was given uh, by the plants in spirit, uh, is that we're moving towards the tree of eternity, Yidrasil. Uh, the tree of the nine worlds of the Norse traditions. Uh, it's a tree that's deeply connected to Archangel uh, Mikael or Michael. Um, there are many things to say about the U, which we're going to be sharing through the transmissions again on this immersion. But I think perhaps the most important thing to understand is that when we were working with Elder, the Elder tree has a, has a hollow stem and really gives us this idea of being the hollow bone. And if we are the hollow bone, it means we're able to channel our higher self impulses free of distortion through a clearly aligned channel into our heart in the present moment. And that is when real magic can start to happen. If we haven't cleaned the terrain, haven't got aligned, haven't got centered, then it's going to be a very difficult to be a hollow bone, even to our own higher selves. Uh, and B, if we can get some kind of channel, to upstairs to those higher aspects of ourself the likelihood is that it's going to come through in a distorted manner uh, due to contamination of the terrain due to toxicity of the terrain many many things and so as jupiter uh, is in uh, now a forwards motion and probably in the next few days going to enter into the 29th degree of pisces uh, how this is feeling to me is a rising of the watery emotional realms the astral planes the 4d emotional body of humans and as that water level rises it's imperative that we keep jettisoning uh, jettisoning the ballast the burdens the heavy weights are no longer service at the individual level because if we don't do that we're going to get pulled down under the waterline and as jupiter moves towards aries and that wonderful uh solstice energy where that's going to be going into zero degrees you can't make this stuff up jupiter will be entering aries on that powerful winter solstice it seems summer solstice if you're in <laughs> the southern hemisphere it seems as though we are being encouraged and guided to now enter into the possibility of becoming the you that is really what the U tree is about. We become the fifth dimensional consciousness. That is the U. And that is where we can start to really manifest our own visions of, um, of our new uh, for both ourselves at the individual level and the collective level. And again, as uh, said in many previous podcasts, and again, uh, as Pam herself has said on many times, you know, it's really important that we focus on our new uh, visions for ourselves. And if we can work with like minded people, great. But as the water levels are rising, there is a lot of incoherency uh, in the wider collective space. And it's how to say it's making it more challenging to um, work or be with people or environments or organizations who are not in their integrity, not in their authenticity, and most of all, are not coherent. 
And I'm sure many of you listening to this video will be able to see in your own life where those incoherencies are cropping up, maybe even within yourself, uh, for sure. Uh, over the last few months, any little uh, aspects of myself that have not been aligned have been brought very, very strongly into my awareness to look at and deal with. And that is an ongoing process uh, for all of us. But as we uh, learn to let go and detach, we have the possibility to become not only the hollow bone of the elder, but to become the hollow tree to become the hollow world tree that is the toroidal field. We ourselves are toroidal fields, you know, and if that toroidal field is clear and flowing beautifully, then we can pretty much manifest anything we want. But if we are working with incoherent frequencies, uh, either in our space, within ourselves or the people around it, it's very, very difficult. Speaking from experience, it's very, very difficult to manifest the things we need because the incoherencies will start to pull the new earth vision down to the lowest common frequency. And um, as we move towards this solstice, uh, I am always aware of the three days of stillness. Some people may say three days of darkness. Uh, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it could well be dark. Um, many people have speculated about what does this all mean. Uh, I personally feel that uh, regardless, we have these beautiful three days of still energy and energetically they are very still. I remember last winter solstice at the point when the solstice actually kicked, which was about 11 o'clock in the morning here in Mexico, the whole energy just flatlined incredibly intense. I don't know if any of you remember how intense the energy was in the build-up to winter solstice, uh, summer solstice last, <laughs> last December, um, uh, off the back of what was then, I think, a new moon eclipse in Sag uh, around December the 4th. A uh, very, very powerful occurrence. We're now 12 months on again from that. So looping back to that energy, if you remember what was going on for yourself during that time, you may still see many of the motifs uh, now um my own life so um yeah just wanted to bring this into uh, all of your awareness uh what's going on over at quantum plant healing um the sequence of events the astrology is really really important as always um we always have big astrological uh, discussions as part of the immersion myself and kelly hunter uh do a dedicated pieces sometimes we release them you'll have seen occasional ones like the artemisias and black moon lilith which is in incredibly interesting uh always love doing those pieces with kelly and also the moons and mythos show and really with the immersions part of what we do is we merge astrology with plant medicine with mayan magic with wave spells incredibly powerful tools uh for helping to heal but also to manifest and uh hope to be doing a, a piece uh, coming out uh, in a few days time with some of the teachers from those immersions and also some of the uh, people that have participated and uh, have something to share about their experiences so watch out for that hopefully coming out in a few days time here on the youtube channel and on quantumplanthealing.com um so the energy of the wave spell that we'll be working with in the uh, Ewing motion from the 13th to the 25th uh, of December is, like I said, the magnetic red moon, which is really embodying uh, the pillar of light, being that pillar of light, uh, being that clear channel, being that hollow bone. And of course, this is very much the energy of the U too. Um, and so this is where we are headed into the final part of this year um personally i'm taking every day as it comes each day at a time one of the wonderful insights that comes out of working with yarrow is that uh, everything is super efficient super precise and no need to give up any more energy than is necessary for any particular activity uh everything uh the the mantra of yarrow is the uh is intentional restraint the magic of yarrow is intentional restraint how to restrain yourself with intention to do what is necessary and not use any excess energy very very powerful plant yarrow and um just to say we now have a whole bunch of special offers for the immersions that have already passed they're still super powerful many people out there have joined uh the sequence maybe not from the beginning jumped into elder and uh, really got a lot from it but then realized that they wanted to go back and do the previous work with the artemisias and dandelion we've now put together a bunch of bundled uh special offers um to to catch up and do those uh, different immersions you can see all of those on the immersion offer page on quantumplanthealing.com and uh, there's even a package to to catch up and uh get prepared for the you uh now each of those immersions did take um, 13 days um in the live format 
there are still places available on the U Immersion to, to do it live. Uh, we have live calls as uh, transmissions go out every day in those. And um, there are still places to do that. So um, a lot coming up um, here at Quantum Plant Healing. And um, just wanted to share with uh, all of you out there the sequence uh, as shown to us and uh, why uh, why they need to share about these emotions. They're super powerful. And uh, yeah, we are now into the final stages of the collapse of the old paradigm and the ushering in of the new earth. But as myself and many other healers and uh, seers and astrologers have said, it's like the new earth isn't just going to happen to us. Uh, no, we have to do the inner work and the process is ruthless. Uh, and the whole idea of the weighing of the scales to see whether your soul is as light as a feather is, is a thing. Because if from elevating with the incredible amount of light that's coming into the planet right now through the photonic belt, uh, also with many solar flares, um, you know, a lot of light is coming to us too, which is why we've been working with plants like horsetail to try and assimilate the light with more silica into our bodies to free up the density, particularly the heavy metal density, which has been a big part of the process of the last few years. And you can see uh, myself talking with my friend and nutritionist, Rebecca O'Reilly, about a lot of this and how to detox these metals out of our body uh, on one of the other playlists uh, where we have the Food as Medicine show on the YouTube channel, uh, but also by working with dandelion. Dandelion's a great liver detoxer. And uh, I really highly recommend definitely doing heavy metal detoxes if you haven't done one um, immediately. Uh, definitely do a liver detox uh, immediately if you can. Um, uh, and also to think about um, the work of the Artemisias, including the terrain of parasitic energies. We are now living at a time when that level of toxicity is almost ubiquitous, because if we allow ourselves to get clogged from our environment uh, very quickly, we find our spirits becoming low, our energy becoming low. And uh, often uh, people can mistake uh, tiredness actually for other levels of uh, toxicity that want to seek uh, our energy for themselves. Uh, so, you know, this is where the work of the Artemisias can really help us. So that's it for now. Um, I look forward to uh, connecting with some of you, hopefully many of you in the immersions or on future calls. Um, please do feel free to sign up to the membership at quantumplanthealing.com. It is free, it takes uh, like 20 seconds or something. Uh, we do have fairly regular live calls now that go out on that uh, website as part of the uh, membership uh, group. Uh, everyone's in, uh, able to to sign into those live or to watch the uh, replays. We cover many topics. Often uh, we have round discussions with other people. Uh, very interesting and uh, yeah, hugely rewarding for all of us who take part in those. So please do feel free to have a look at those too. In the meantime, uh, you can expect more podcasts coming out from myself and Pete with Weber Weird. Uh, hopefully going to do another Wachuma session with my brother, Sergey Baranoff down in South America, down in Peru. And uh, like I said, there's going to be another video coming out uh, with uh, the uh, Solstice preview from myself and Pam and also another Moons and Mythos uh, looking at the upcoming moon cycles uh, with myself and Kelly Hunter too. So lots going on. And as always, encouraging all of you out there to stay high vibe, uh, keep it real, keep it empty and uh, keep it in your heart and um yeah the the new earth is here everybody and it's just a case now of finding our way into it and being in that frequency ourselves, and um taking the opportunity with both hands as it's presented to all of us so sending big love and uh huge plant blessings out to all of you out there and hope to see you soon take care ciao for now